Hello everyone. Uh, this is lecture two, um, which is an introduction to Excel and Python. So our line for today is we're going to start off uh, talking about computing tools in general, just a little bit of background into computing tools. And then I'm going to very briefly highlight um, spreadsheets and structured programming. There are two additional videos that go with this lecture. Uh, one on, goes into detail on using spreadsheets, the other goes into detail on structured programming. Um, and so I'm not going to hit those in this video as hard, um, but uh, I'm going to just briefly touch on them. Okay, let's dive right in. Um, so uh, last time we talked about the difference between analytical methods and numerical methods, and we said that analytical methods were great, but that they were limited, and we'd like to be able to use numerical methods um, to be able to solve a lot of math problems in engineering. Um, and so we're going to back up and talk about computing tools um, and how these computing tools are going to allow us to do this. So um, the very first thing we want to ask, um, which may seem really basic, but we want to say, what is a computer? All right. And uh, I'm going to come up with a really, uh, really simplistic um, idea of what a computer is. So a computer has, in my definition here, um, four components. So it has some input, um, and I'm going to draw a box around input just to sort of capture as an idea. The input comes into this thing uh, here where there's uh, memory and a central processing unit, um, and then those produce some kind of output. Okay, so this is my basic model of a computer, and let's talk about each of these things sort of in turn. So uh, uh, the first thing here uh, would be input. So what do we mean by input? This is anything you're using to interact with this machine. So this could be a mouse, could be a keyboard, okay, it could be a touch screen, or it could be my tablet that I'm writing on here. Okay, these would all be examples of uh, of input devices, and of course. Uh, corresponding output devices would be things like the screen. Um, it could be a printer. All right, um, lots of different kinds of output devices. All right, this this sort of thing. And um, sometimes we collectively call these things, by the way, I/O for input/output. If you've ever seen that before. Okay, so those are sort of the ways that we, you know, the computer has to have something that comes in, something that comes out. But the real guts of what's going on in the computer are these other two things. We have a CPU, which is a central processing unit. Okay, that's what CPU stands for, central processing unit. And a CPU is really composed of two different pieces. A CPU has um, part one part, which is called an arith, arithmetic, uh, logic unit or an ALU. Oops, a little dyslexia there. ALU. All right. Um, and this is the part of the computer where um, it executes logical instructions. So it does logic, things like true or false, um, and it does uh, arithmetic. Okay, it's in the name here, arithmetic logic unit. Um, and really, this is the guts of ones and zeros. And you can take a class on this in computer science. You can go read more about this. Okay, but you know, in logic, it'll do what's called Boolean logic, where if I have a bit that comes in, a, a, an electron, okay, and another one, if I have those two things, if I have one and one, that gives me a one. So if I have something that's true and something else that's true, that gives me a true in the end. Okay, um, so that would be an and. All right, and so there are logical circuits, um, you know, actually on the chip that do this AND operation. There's also basic arithmetic, so it'll take one and you know one zero and make one zero one if one zero is in, uh, or excuse me, not one zero one, but one one, okay, and binary addition, okay. Um, and so um, really, that's what the the CPU does is it does these two things, logic and arithmetic. Okay, so that's the first sort of part of the CPU. The next part is called the control unit. Okay, and the control unit 
um, is is uh, worrying about the execution okay of these operations all right um, and it communicates with memory okay note that this is super simplified I, I'm sure there's probably electrical engineers that watch this and just cringe all right or computer scientists so this is just really basic idea of what's happening in computer all right but but basically so the CPU has this part that's doing the math but also has a part to tell it go get the one and the one zero from memory okay and bring them in here and do that before you do the logic operation before you do this one and one or in the opposite order all right so it has to send stuff back and forth okay so that sort of um, tells us what memory is there's my okay so memory um, uh, is information storage Okay, so if the CPU up here is processing these ones and zeros and producing other ones and zeros, this is just holding ones and zeros. All right, um, and there's two uh, uh, kinds of memory. There's um, what's called volatile memory, okay, and non-volatile memory. Okay, volatile memory is memory that, um, that the ones and zeros go away when the power goes off. Okay, so no power equals no storage. All right, and this on your computer is your RAM or your random access memory. So in this case, if I turn my computer off, all the information that's stored in RAM disappears. Volatile memory is no power. Man writing no power is yes storage okay so this would be your hard disk or increasingly uh, flash memory okay so uh, memory comes in these two different flavors all right so when we're talking about memory we're talking about reading and writing from the hard disk we're also talking about reading and writing from RAM and of course there's different levels of memory and, and caches and things that are located closer to the CPU so that they're faster. And so what happens in your computer is there's this clock, all right, that's causing certain cycles. And that cycle is driving the, inf the, the, the passing of these ones and zeros back and forth and the number of operations that are happening in the CPU. This is happening again and again and again. And you get input that comes in, that affects what's written in memory, that affects the operations that's happening on the CPU. And this is just moving around and around and around and then output comes out. Okay, so um, the sort of key to take away from this, uh, one key takeaway, is that all computers, all computers, all computers do the same thing. All right, so they do the same thing. They do logic, arithmetic, they uh, store and retrieve information from memory. Okay, and then they do I.O. input and output. The, all computers do this. So uh, your phone does this. Okay, your calculator does this. Okay, your laptop does this. Okay, all computers do this. They may have different input output. Okay, your microwave does this. Okay, the control board on your microwave. Okay, all computers have these same basic elements. And so um, this is important because uh, we're going to be learning about different kinds of numerical calculations. All right, so what we want to do in this class is we want to solve math problems on computers. Okay. But that could be on a phone, okay, on your laptop, okay, or on the supercomputer, okay, and and all of them are going to have these same elements. There's commonalities between all of them, right? Because they're all doing the same thing: logic, arithmetic, read and write memory, right? So now, what's different about them is the CPU may be faster, okay or you know more instruction sets 
Okay, so that could be different. All right, there could be more memory. Okay, so usually when we're going in this direction towards supercomputers, that's the case. This can do more of these calculations per minute, all right, per second, but they still do the same kinds of calculations. All right, so that's the sort of first key point. So, okay, so what are we in this class? We are learning um, uh, numerical tools. Okay, so what's a numerical tool? Well, numerical tool, okay, a numerical tool, um, well, we'll just write this up here actually. Numerical tools are pieces of software. Okay, um, built on uh, uh, top of computing machines. Okay, um, that can solve math problems. All right, so if all computers do the same thing, numerical tools are software that we write on top of computers to solve these kinds of math problems. All right, so if we can maybe, you know, draw a diagram over here, okay, so we have the computer here, right? Then we have a numerical tool up here, right? And what we haven't said is, so this software, okay, um, somehow it needs to uh, solve the actual math problem. And that math, uh, there's a branch of mathematics that allows us to do this, which is called numerical analysis. Okay, so this is the branch of mathematics. that um, allows us to convert, um, you know, that allows us to, you know, solve problems on computers. Okay, so a numerical tool is an implementation of the principles of numerical analysis, right? So this is the, you know, the fundamental math of what's going on, all right? And this is the implementation. All right, so there's different flavors of numerical tools that implement the same numerical analysis. All right, so in this class, so our class um, is called numerical tools. Okay, so we are learning this. We are learning these implementations. But along the way, we must learn some numerical analysis. All right, so we're going to learn some of the this this connecting bridge. All right, that allows us to to know what these algorithms are, so that then we can implement the tools. All right, but we're not just learning numerical analysis for its sake. Although I love that subject and and it's dear uh, near and dear to my heart. Okay, um, but we're learning it for practical reasons. Okay, um, uh, we you know are um, going to be practical. Okay, and, and also focus on useful software tools. Okay, and so we are going to focus specifically on two tools. Two tools that, we're, that are super common for engineers to use. So two common, uh, and they're really classes of tools. All right, just like, um, uh, you know, there's a uh, hammer, there's different uh, maybe implementations of hammer, there's mallets and there's hammers and there's sledgehammers, okay, but they're all things that hammer things and screwdrivers, there's different, you know, drivers, all right, um, but there's these two classes of tools here and the one is a spreadsheet, okay, and the second one is a structured programming language.
okay? Um, and maybe you didn't know when you signed up for chemical engineering that programming was going to be part of it. Uh, hopefully you did, all right? We, we recently surveyed our alumni uh, about programming, and I think maybe all of them, maybe there was one of the dozens and hundreds of people that filled this out that said that they didn't think programming was that important for an engineer. But pretty much everybody knows that engineers program, but every computer scientist will also tell you that engineers program weird or they don't like the way they program. Okay, that'll be kind of fun to as you learn, and maybe you'll see um, we take a more pragmatic approach to programming. It's sort of a do what you can to make it work kind of approach, um, whereas computer scientists are a lot more elegant, I think, in their approaches. Okay, so we're going to talk about these two types of tools, and in our class, um, the examples we're going to use um, that we're going to focus on is Microsoft Excel for a, an example of a spreadsheet. And the structured programming language that we're going to use is called Python. All right. Um, and so I'm going to talk about each of these briefly. Um, but before I do that, I want to step back for a second before I, I, I missed something. And I want you to puzzle about something. So this is my puzzle question for you. I want you to stop and think about this. So here's a puzzle. OK. So the puzzle question for you do is if all computers, okay, if all they do as I scroll up here, if all they can do is logic, all right, and arithmetic, if that's really what's built in, if everything else is just pushing electrons around, okay, in different orders, and all they're really doing is arithmetic and logic, okay, so that's what I'm going to say here. So if only arithmetic and logic, okay, how does it evaluate, how does a computer evaluate something like this, sine of pi over 3, okay, so I want you to pause, and I want you to think about that for a minute, so I don't want you to look it up, I don't want you to do anything else, I just want you to pause and think about that for a minute. How would a computer go ahead and evaluate that? Okay, I hope you took a minute to think about that. How, how do you think it would go? If we were in class, I would ask you, I'd ask you to ask your neighbor, I'd ask you to talk about it for a minute. There's a couple different ways, okay? So it turns out you can take, maybe you learned this in your calculus class, you can take sine and you can turn it into a power series. So I, I can't remember what it is, x plus x cubed over 3 plus whatever, okay? And you plug pi uh, over 3 into these, all right? And you do this Taylor series expansion. And if you keep enough terms, all right, then uh, it'll eventually converge. So there, you can do arithmetic. You just do summation, right? We do sums, okay? We have multiplication, okay? Division, okay? We've turned evaluating this into arithmetic. So that's one, okay, one way. Another way you might do it, so this would be Taylor series. Another way you might do it is by just having a lookup table. Okay, there you're just using memory and you just say, I have sine of pi over 3. The answer is, I don't remember off the top of my head what the sine of pi over 3 is. It's kind of embarrassing. All right, now let's see, pi halves is. Uh, it's going to be something like the root 2 over 2 or something like that, right? Okay, I don't remember if that's right. Don't quote me on that. Now it's on the internet for all to see. Okay, um, uh, so there's just some lookup table. So you've got a value here, you know, pi halves, that's 1, uh, you know, sine to pi is 0, etc. Right? So there's just some lookup table that you have, so you're just storing it in memory. All right? Um, uh, I think how it's stored, I looked this up a couple years ago, now I'm not so sure I remember, is actually by a different kind of series, okay, which is called uh, Chebyshev, which are called Chebyshev polynomials. So like Chebyshev polynomials. Okay, it turns out you can write sign in an expansion with a different kind of polynomials that are, uh, Taylor series don't converge very fast, meaning you have to have lots of terms you know, out here to make them converge. That takes a long time to evaluate. Chebyshev polynomials converge a lot more quickly, so it turns out they're better, 
Okay, so anyway, those are a couple ways, right? I don't expect you to know that, but this is an example, right? This is an example of numerical analysis. All right, so in numerical analysis, right, um, you have to know a little bit about the math. I have to know about how sine can get converted into arithmetic. You know, how do I get to go from sine to arithmetic? Okay, and then the numerical tool, say in Excel, will be how do I call sine? How do I take, you know, how do I put in sine of pi over 3? How do I do that in Microsoft Excel? Underneath the hood, Microsoft Excel is doing one of these things, all right? It's doing something like that. So in this class, we're going to learn a little bit about this, about numerical analysis, and we're definitely going to learn about this, about these tools and how we do that. And oftentimes, like many things as a good engineer, right, you can't just learn how to use the tool without knowing a little bit, at least a little bit, about what's happening underneath the hood, all right? And actually, you're a much better user of the tool if you know a lot about what's happening under the hood. And some things you'll be able to write for yourself, and we'll learn. And other things we just don't have time to get to, which is kind of a bummer. But it's fun stuff anyway. And if you want to know more about this, if you want to know more about this kind of stuff, there are classes, math classes, but we also have Chemical Engineering 541 here at BYU. Okay? Um, and in Chemie 541, you go into this a lot more and learn a lot more about how it's done. And to me, that's a, uh, I don't teach that class. Uh, currently, we have uh, another professor in the department who teaches that class, but I love that subject. I love numerical analysis. Okay, so I am going to um, turn our attention really quickly with maybe our last two minutes here um, and talk about um, these other pieces, all right? Um, spreadsheets. Um, oh, my goodness. Spreadsheets, okay? And then I'm going to talk about structured programming language. All right. So a spreadsheet is essentially a big table, okay, with cells in it, okay, and I have an example here. I pulled up Excel, all right, oh, went to sleep on me, all right, you can see back here. So if I open up a new sheet, you can see that I have a bunch of cells, all right, and in a way, each one of these cells is a little calculator. So I can put in here equals 3 plus 3, and it'll do the calculation. And so in a way, each cell is sort of a bit of memory and a bit of the CPU running. And the way you, uh, you know, uh, uh, work with the spreadsheet is that you refer to these cells and they're interconnected. So if I want to do this times 2, now I can see that this is holding a certain value, okay, and this one's related to it. And by relating each other, you know, across these cells, you can build up algorithms that allow you to do the kinds of numerical analysis that you need. Of course, um, they also have some things built in. So they have formulas in Excel. So if you want to do sine of pi over 3, you do sine of pi. You need to give it an extra set of parentheses there, divide by 3. And that looks like it's probably the square root of 3 over 2. Is that what it is? Square root of 3 over 2. Ah, I was wrong earlier, but I recognize the decimal points for square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so that's the basic idea behind a spreadsheet, is it's this uh, table of values that's able to perform calculations. Okay, so there are, um, there's relations between cells. Okay, um, and, oh, and it looks like I need a new page, pardon me here as I scroll a little bit. Okay, so relations between cells, and we also have some built-in formulas. Okay, we'll see some other things along the way that Excel has. Excel has this nice thing called Solver that implements an algorithm. It's very, that's very handy, okay, uh, for optimization. Okay, we'll see that kind of thing later. All right, so that's a spreadsheet. Um, number three is a structured programming language. Okay, a, a structured programming language is um, what I'll say is a codified set of instructions. 
okay, um, to the CPU and memory. Okay, and so when I say codified, I mean there's a code. All right, so there's a way to translate uh, the set of instructions that you have in order, and that will then go tell CPU and memory, hey, here's what you're going to do. Okay, so you might say, uh, I'm going to say x is assigned to be 3 plus 3, and it will create a variable x. It will go out into memory and find a bucket that it calls x, and it will take uh, 3 and 3, and it will do 3 plus 3, and it will take that answer and store it in x. All right. Um, and now, of course, that's going to be 6, so you get a value of 6 there, All right? And so there's this code. You have to build up this very specific keywords, okay, that you use to tell uh, uh, the computer what to do, All right? And there are different codes, different uh, languages or codes, okay, for encoding these sets of instructions. And some of them you've probably heard before. There's things like Fortran, C++, okay, uh, and in this class, or Java is another one, in this class we're going to do Python, okay, Python is very popular right now for many good reasons, we use Python all the time in my research, um, it's, it's wonderful, okay, and we are going to actually use this implementation of Python in this class called Spider, all right, Spider is a piece of software all right, that uh, will uh, recognize the Python code. And here's your very first Python code you've ever seen. Here there's a print statement, okay, and inside the print statement I put it in parentheses to tell it what I want to print, and then I put quotes around the string that I want Python to print, and then here I put hello world. And I come up here to spider, and I press play, and you can see it runs that, and then it prints out hello world. Okay, I can say instead of hello world, hello world is the classic first program, but I can say hello chemical engineering 263 and run that guy, and now it says hello k263. All right, I can do other things like make x assigned to 3 plus 3, and then I can print x as well, and it'll now print out a 6 at the end. All right, so this codified sense of instructions, okay, it's language code. It is performed sequentially. Okay, from top to bottom. Okay, and we're going to use spider. Okay, all right. So that is what I'm going to tell you. Um, about these. Let me see if there's anything else that I've missed just as I glance at my notes real quick. Um, I think that's all I'm going to tell you for now. All right, there are two other videos, so I'm not trying to leave you hanging too much. There are two other videos. One, all about spreadsheets. I go through a bunch of examples. I do a bunch of stuff in Excel. I take you through a bunch of features, locking, cells, all sorts of good stuff, okay? Copy, paste, all sorts of things you can do in Excel. It's a nice little intro, all right? Maybe you've used Excel before, maybe you can breeze through that one, all right? A lot of students have used Excel. Some have less experience. If you've got less experience with Excel, spend some time with that video, all right? Do the examples, work through it, okay? The next one is structured programming language. There's another video on Python, okay? It goes through, it tells you and shows you how to install Spider. All right, which is important. And then it walks you through these examples. All right? You definitely need to walk through this. Go through that video, press pause, work it out for yourself. The most important thing in programming to learning programming is to play around. All right? Break it and fix it. Go back and try it again. All right? Uh, spend a little time with it. All right? You can just do the homework. You won't be nearly, you won't learn nearly as well as if you spend a little bit of time playing around with the example codes. Okay, so that is all I have for you. Um, best of luck doing the homework and we'll talk to you next time.